interest in knitting, crochet, history of knitting and crochet, pop culture, and everything in between. So yeah, That's we're fun. back for our third episode. Yay. Yeah. All about Christmas. All about the Yuletide season. Yes. Very exciting. So, favorite Christmas movie? Oh. Well, my mind firstly goes to The Grinch. Jim Carrey's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. That was on TV the other day, and um, I grew up watching it, I think like most people, and I was watching it again as an adult, and I'm like, this is, it's just so funny. And I think it's one of the most quoted Christmas movies in mm -hmm. my family. Um, we kind of just um, always, always quoted it, and it's it's just so funny. Um, oh, yeah. Great message, too, you know, don't want to be a Grinch on yep. Christmas. So, Never. I don't know, I love, I love the Grinch. Um, yeah, that one's kind of the first one that comes to mind. Yeah, yeah. yep. Uh, that and Christmas Vacation, the Griswolds. Yeah, we were restocking and uh, redoing the Malbrigo wall, and that was a question Rachel had asked me, and that has to be the one because it's very relatable to me anyway. <laughs> uh, my family, anytime we go on a vacation, there is some sort of Griswold quality to it, so that has to be it. Yeah. It's just funny, it's quotable, and then also there's the Uncle Eddie who says very mm -hmm. obscene things but it's hilarious <laughs> and i will not say it for the podcast but yeah. i find myself probably quoting that movie and um the grinch as well yeah. it's like loathe entirely or when yeah. he's trying on his clothes and he's like i'm not going yeah. so has to yeah. be those two i think things. um maybe it, it might be a tie or just like in my top christmas movies is the, the home alone movies oh, i think yes. you can't kind of go wrong with those because again classics so funny um i think that's one of the rare occasions where the sequel I think is better than the first one. I like the one, you know, Lost in New York oh, yes, better than yes. the, I mean they're both great. Um another very quotable, funny, fun movie. Absolutely. So yeah, Home Alone is another another one up there. Yeah. Too. Good stuff. And um I'm very much looking forward to actually relaxing this Christmas and sitting, knitting, watching a movie. I might even delve into watching a new series, um, maybe the Wednesday one where my sister is home from college, so maybe we'll bond over a new show, but we are bonding over Victoria, the PBS uh, yes. series that um, Jenna Coleman is in from uh, the BBC. Yes. She's Which in I, I started too. watching that year, like a few years ago. I think I watched the first two seasons and I don't think I ever finished it. Mm -hmm. um, so now that you guys have brought it up again, I'm like, I should go back and rewatch it because it's a very, very good historic uh, drama that was very, very good. Yes. Uh, very funny. So my mother, Rhonda, isn't really into history, but she has learned so much history from us. Mm -hmm. And she's so into Queen Victoria now and this era. Yeah. And it's so, sort of funny. We can yeah. all bond over history in a lot of different creative ways. So. Yeah. Well, that's like my mom, too. We were just talking about how our moms are very similar um, because my mom was also not into history at all in school or growing up. Um, and then she started watching The Tudors, uh, which, you know, it was very popular, uh, you know, years ago, yes. um, and she is like obsessed with Henry VIII and the Tudor time period. So she now loves history um, for the most part. She loves learning about it, and uh, yeah, that's her favorite time period. So um, I am. I've always thought like this, as even as a small child. Like if I'm watching something historic, I kind of always understood that like this is entertainment. I'm not like this isn't going to be literal history I'm right. not being taught something I know there's gonna be inaccuracies or embellishments or whatever so even as a young kid if I watched a movie or a TV show I'm like I want to learn more about it so I go and I, I'll like pick up a book about it so I feel like um, I think the entertainment world is such a great gateway to, to learning more about history if oh, it's yeah. done right and if it's done done well then I think it can be um, a really uh, yeah great way to introduce people to history if they haven't liked it I agree so What's new? What's exciting in the knitting world for you? Um, I started a Sophie scarf. Yes. 
because everybody's been doing it and I've given into peer pressure and I want it, I want one. So I started that at our knitting meetup a couple nights ago, um, which we can talk about too. Absolutely. But I am, um, yeah, I started mine. I'm using the Madeline Posh DK. Um, I forget what color was Yoko. 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 I will include a photo. Yes. It's a really, really, um, really pretty colors very speckly mm -hmm. um i have the little bit that i've done i think i have to pull it out because friday night after we got home from our little meetup i decided to do more of it and i think i was just too tired and i i messed up a row and i tried to work back and then it got all messed up so i think i have to start over i didn't go too far ahead where i don't feel like that bad that i have to but i think i should but i'm, I'm getting it down i yeah. think uh as you worked out the kinks um and hopefully it'll go quickly, but um, that's what I'm starting with. I have not had time to do any other projects. Um, the ones that like we've been talking about, oh, yeah. I have not touched them since this last episode, so I figured I don't need to bring them because I don't have any progress on that. Um, mostly been working Over on yeah, working on Christmas gifts and some other little things. So absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, finished uh, my first soapy scarf. Very excited about that. Yeah. Working on another. Did have to pull it out twice, just at the beginning. So that's good. Uh, it, everything always ends up coming out better once you pull it out a couple times. If it's yeah. a small item, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Uh, so yes, I'm working on that. I will include some photos using mm -hmm. an 801010 from uh, Chelsea Yarns in uh, the colorway flip side with a Malabrigo mohair in Oasis, and it is really stunning cool mohair colors. to work with. Oh my gosh, the colors are very fun and speckly, going to make it a little longer. And uh, also we are going to link some pattern notes and sort of hints, especially for beginner knitters on our YouTube, uh, about how to make the silky scarf a little longer on the neck, so you can wrap it around and it sort of falls almost like a fun uh, necktie, yeah. and you can style it in different ways. So that'll be coming to our YouTube as well. Um, we also have a really fun, Make along coming yes. our way. Yes. yes. So the ladies from Our Wakers Farm uh, Cocktail Hour at the Coop has invited us to be hosts yes. for their new uh, new to you make along. Mm -hmm. So there will be a hashtag on Instagram that everyone can follow uh, to join in on the make along, and we will be doing some fun store giveaways as yes. part of the make along as the hosts. Yes. So very exciting. Yes. And it's a uh, their whole concept of new to you is basically picking up a new fiber art, things that you haven't really done before. If you're strictly a knitter, maybe you want to try crochet or vice versa, mm -hmm. or um, some of their other examples were felting and weaving and spinning and all these really fun things that you could try out for the first time if you've never done it before. Um, it got me thinking of, mm -hmm. uh, of course, yeah. I the last thing I need is more more, more hobbies, more hobbies and projects to do, but I've, I've wanted to try felting mm -hmm. and I've wanted to try a little bit of weaving, but like the, um, the, like the wall art, oh, like sure. the tapestry weaving, um, and I find those really, really cool. Yeah. And I feel like you could do, you could make really fun designs with that. So yeah. those are two things that like I would probably want to try myself because they're new, but yeah. Um, yeah, you could do anything fiber related that's new to you. So. Yeah, that would be really fun to try. Um, I would love to also learn spinning um, because it's such a yeah, I know. Uh, if you do it on the drop spindle, I know that's a great way for beginners to learn and it's a lot more cost effective in the beginning, yeah. um, but it is a little bit more finicky and kind of time consuming in actually spinning. I know obviously like the electric spinners are like yeah. great, but those are going to cost a little bit more. Yeah. So that is on my list as well. Um, actually doing sh more short rows are probably on my <laughs> list too. Yeah. So I would like to practice those I think as yeah. part of the make along. Yeah. So um, look yeah. out for that. It'll be fun. It starts in January, Yep. January 1st, and it'll go until um, Valentine's Day, February 14th. Yep. And we'll link all of the details and information, hashtag and everything, uh, in the description so you have all that information. And feel free to also DM us or Cocktail Hour at the Coop as well. Uh, and we'll put their information uh, also. Yeah. And you're working on a project with some of the yarn that you got at the farm. Yes. It's oh, so, so soft, good. beautiful yes. yarn. If you've never been, it's located in uh, Wall, New Jersey, and it's they have gorgeous yarn from their alpacas, and it's just so, so pretty. Yeah. 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 So what tea are we drinking today? Ooh, I'm so excited for this tea because um, this is one that I tried maybe about a month ago. We got it on, well, now, almost two months ago. 
me and my family went on a little day trip to Sleepy Hollow, New York, and we got this at one of the shops there. It's Harney and Sons, which is um, a brand of tea that I am familiar with with some of my other ones, the cherry blossom tea I love. Um, this is spiced black, the holiday spiced black Ooh, tea. Yes. Um, and I tried this when we first got it and it's very, very good. Again, not more of a black tea drinker. So for me, this um, was a good like transition into trying more black teas. Um, it's very good. What do you think? It's delicious. Yeah. Uh, it, when you open up the tin, I get mm -hmm. like a little scent of uh, orange blossom in there, which yeah. I love uh, because a lot of the Greek uh, desserts during yeah. Christmas are scented with orange. Mm -hmm. So actually, I'm going to be talking a little bit about that with our Yule Yuletide tradition content. Cool. But uh, it's a really, really nice tea. It's not super yeah. cinnamon spiced, mm -hmm. which I like. Um, yeah. There's orange flavor. So mm -hmm. there is orange peel. Uh, vanilla flavor, clove, almond flavor, cinnamon, orange, um, apple flower. Hmm. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, it's very good. I like it a lot. Yes. I would recommend. Yes. Um, I think I'm going to add that to my list of teas to get over the Christmas season. Uh, we do have some great teas in store as, uh, as well. Mm -hmm. Also, forgot to mention, uh, as part of the make-along, um, the prizes that will be featured from our store as hosts uh, will be a $50 gift card, a candle and bracelet bundle, as well as uh, a couple of tea items we're going to throw in, and then uh, also a kit for our Mackenzie Cable Beanie, which is, uh, I'll link it on Etsy, but that's using one skein of Mel Brigo Matcha, so another uh, fun little giveaway that I forgot to mention the contents of. So. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Good stuff. I also wanted to talk a little bit about yes, my sweater. Gorgeous. Just for a minute. Um, I planned on wearing a newer Christmas sweater that I actually started making over the summer. Um, it's it's too small for me because mm -hmm. I, I started to make it with leftover yarn. Um, I had a little bit of red and white, so I kind of just was winging it, and I should have made it a little bit bigger, but I don't know if I had enough yarn, whatever. So. Um, it, it like barely doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. It's like ever so slightly too short on me and too short on the sleeves and just a little bit too whatever. But you got those long arms, so. I've got longer <laughs> limbs, um, it's long it's torso, cropped. so it, it would fit, I think, someone slightly smaller than me. I do have it. Um, oh. just to, it's got a little collar on it too, which I like. Um, I don't even know if I remember if I was following a pattern or if I was just I don't know what I was doing, but this is a sweater. Um, it's got some fun striping on the sleeves and the collar. It's great, it's just, it's too small. So instead I'm wearing my green sweater that I made about a year ago. And um, this is a really, really easy pattern for crocheters who are either beginner or intermediate beginners or wanting to um, kind of branch out and start making sweaters or garments. It's made in four pieces and you just stitch it up and it's very simple. Um, so I can link the pattern too. Sure. It's called the, the Mira sweater, and um, it's really easy to uh, to start with if you, if you're looking to do sweaters. So it's green. It's still holiday. So oh, I yeah. figured it's an all I year piece. This one. Yeah. We're all year green yes. people. So <laughs> yes. uh, surprisingly, though, I'm not a red person, and yeah. I'm wearing red today. I feel yeah. I was telling Rachel when we were getting ready to film. Uh, I feel very Switzerland. <laughs> vacation today so yeah. that is my look uh, I'm wearing the classic cowl from Clinton Hill cashmere in the gorgeous uh, bespoke yarn that is a worsted weight in the color scarlet um, and it also matches my nails and my yes. lipstick today yes. you're just uh, rocking the red thank you all around yeah love it and so uh, it's a it's a gorgeous red it's a really classic red but it also has like a sort of touch of like a persimmony uh, orange undertone too so it's yeah. not like a true red where it has like yeah. that blue undertone it's really gorgeous and um it's so soft yeah so so soft. yeah and this project is a one skein wonder mm -hmm. so i think Rhonda, my mother and owner of grace and pearl she knitted up in um a night and mm -hmm. she was watching the show victoria mm -hmm. and it is so nice and warm next to the neck yeah. i think everyone needs one of these um we have some really gorgeous colorways yeah as well in shop so I can link also where to get those on our online shop uh, as well as some photos things like that but yeah. this is a really fun project and uh, just gorgeous luxe cashmere so yes. fun fun for the holidays fun for a gift yeah. um, and an easy knit 
Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, but it's it's working around. Working yeah. around. Yes, we like we like to see. I we love we around. love it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So a little bit of ribbing, but mm -hmm. really it's uh just like an easy, fun, yeah. festive project yeah. too. So okay. great for when you have those really windy days and you just want something to cover your neck, but mm -hmm. don't have all the baggage of you know a yeah. long scarf, which yeah. we love, but also, you know, something easy, practical. Yeah. yeah. Throw it in your purse. Yeah. So, good stuff. So uh, we had our Bell Works meetup uh, yes. launch party for our hook and needle history. So fun. Yeah, yes. uh, good stuff uh, all around. Great people. Mm -hmm. We, I mean, I, I think I don't know if I can speak for you, but I like met new people too. Sure. Um, that you know they came because they saw it, you know, on Instagram. Like we post about it, and um, some uh, some ladies who go to Bell Works every week to go knit. They they joined us as well, and they were super sweet and yep. just. Um, so yeah, it was super fun. Um, we had some good food and good drinks and we knit it. Yeah. It was all fun. Yep. Yeah. And that place is awesome. Yeah. Um, but I would really like to also have a meetup coming at some point soon at the yoga farm. Yes. In Wall. Which is where I was yesterday. Yeah. That was yesterday, right? Oh, cool. Yes. Oh yesterday i had um they had their holiday market um which i mentioned in our last video that i was going to be there um my cousin teaches yoga there and um they uh were very kind enough to invite me to go and it was such a great day Everyone a lot was. of people a lot of traffic like a lot of people came and there were really cool vendors there was a nice band there um so it was a lot of fun so thank you to anybody who came came out um and yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun and they do certain events and things. So um, yeah, I think that'd be fun to like, yeah. connect with them. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, you're in New Jersey and Monmouth County, but you also mm -hmm. feel like you're on a yeah. wonderful farm that's separated from all the noise. Yes. Uh, yeah. Very similar to Arrow Acres, I think, yeah. cause it's, it's close, it's mm -hmm. close by. So if you're familiar with there, it's, it's close. So um, you kind of do feel a little detached from like the craziness of living like by the beach it's oh, like sure. you, you're on a farm it's very different different atmosphere which is absolutely nice. yeah. yeah so we would love to have some meetups there as well do some knitting events and whatnot because we love to support local makers mm -hmm. uh, anyone who's into uh, holistic and uh, just good vibes all around on the Jersey Shore. So really cool. Uh, we also got to meet George, the George farm the cat. cat. You like, oh my gosh, you wanted to take him home. I wanted to. Yeah. Um, he was a pleasure. Yes. So apparently last year I um, I wasn't a part of the holiday mar market, but I, I went there to go um, do some last minute Christmas shopping. And apparently at that time last year, they were brand new kittens. Mm -hmm. Um, and there were a few of them there and the one that was in our greenhouse there was George and he made his way to my table twice and he just laid down on all of my I guess very <laughs> comfortable uh, scarves and, and hats and things and he was just just lounging about it drew a few people to my table so thanks for yeah, that thanks George, George. <laughs> George's cat. Um, he was very very sweet um, very cute cat and uh, yeah he was just wandering around Yep, we love to be in nature, so I think our next knitting meetup will be at the farm yeah, for sure. Cool. Yes, yeah. good stuff. And um, I think for the next portion of our video, Rachel should kick us off. Uh, yes. With what? <laughs> <laughs> with our Yuletide traditions yes. uh, in history. Yeah. Because when I think Yuletide traditions, I for some reason already jump to medieval. Yeah. There's a few things that um, started. I guess in the Middle Ages, mm -hmm. even earlier. My brain actually, funnily enough, goes earlier in okay. the Middle Ages. I mean, you always tend to think of, you know, the history of Christmas and Yule time and all that stuff. You think of more pagan, right. you know, ancient kind of pagan stuff and winter solstice, you know, the, the celebrations around that time and um, uh, Saturnalia in, you know, Roman Empire mm -hmm. and everything. So, um, I that's kind of where I started and then I said okay I can't like I can't do a whole history of Christmas I have to like pick and choose traditions oh, sure. that I want to do so I kind of zeroed it in um, to a few and I picked of course a couple of medieval ones um, the first one that I want to do is the nativity scene that mm -hmm. we see um, for Christmas and that is the depiction of Jesus being born in a manger um, surrounded by uh, 
Mary and Joseph, the angels, the animals, the shepherds, the magi, all that, you know, classic Christmas scene. Um, that nativity scene has a medieval origin with uh, St. Francis of Assisi, who uh, was uh, a, well, is still a very, very popular saint. Um, and he uh, was born in 1181, he died in 1226. Um, so he was the first person to uh, replicate that scene of the nativity. Um, he had live animals. Um, and he had the manger there. And um, he also, you can com combine my other little tradition that I looked into was Christmas carols, was when he was doing that, um, they also were singing um, Christmas carols. So um, so the nativity scene um, had its origins in medieval Italy. Um, and what's, what's kind of cool is that um, St. Francis who Maybe people know he is the kind of patron saint of animals. Um, he, uh, every time, uh, every year around his um, feast day, people come and get their animals blessed and everything. So um, the hay that was used in the manger for his first nativity scene um, was kind of seen to have miraculously healed some of the animals that would eat it, um, which is a little little tidbit on, yeah. on that um, and so he um, started that and then that tradition kind of just took off and, and became more and more elaborate as the years went on and um, uh, then you started adding more elements into the scene because at first it was just the manger and the animals um, then you added in real people you know kind of replicating it um, you added different elements into the story, like the Magi, the Three Kings, or the Shepherds and the Angels. Um, and then eventually people started making, you know, little figurines. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what we see today, like those smaller like the miniatures. miniatures of, of that scene. And actually, um, in the 18th century, um, that's when it really becomes elaborate, mm -hmm. but then it was banned during the French Revolution. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of Christmas traditions were banned at, at some point right. in history. Um, and then that's when they became more miniature because okay. they were, people were doing them secretly. secretly. Um, mm -hmm. And so they're making smaller miniature versions of the nativity scene. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about wow. that. Um, has a medieval origin there. So. Wow. Okay. Well, yes, uh, so I do, not that I have much experience in medieval history in Europe, um, however, I do have a book recommendation, Ooh, and maybe it. we can make it part of a book club coming up. Oh. It's uh, the Domesday or Doomsday book. Oh, um, yeah. Yes, and I will link. I'm so sorry, I'm forgetting the name of the author, but I will link it uh, below and show a picture as well. So it's a science fiction historical fiction mashup. Um, so the main awesome. character yeah. goes back and time travels to the 1340s, which is when uh, the Black plague was running rampant mm -hmm. through Europe for basically the first wave, I guess you would say, of yeah. the, like the Black Death. Mm -hmm. um, so you get a little bit of like the medieval winter traditions, cool. um, and it's sort of also uh, a take on just humanity in general, and I think cool. it's a really nice story that you can read during the holidays because it does make you feel like, okay, those people are very separated from us, but they're not so different after all. Yeah. So cool. I read that uh, when I was sort of at the tail end of my master's program recommended by one of my professors and it's a really really cool. great read i don't love uh science fiction so much mm -hmm. but because it was a mashup with history yeah. i think it was very cool and of course we love the idea of time travel as well and yeah. sort of the imagination of uh historical fiction mm -hmm. so uh definitely a recommendation love that. Yeah. yeah and it's a cozy okay. read too awesome. like a nice that. winter read yeah. So uh, I, I really enjoyed also learning about medieval England at that time mm -hmm. because obviously like Middle English was a different, yeah. uh, basically language yeah. uh, than regular it sounded English. Sounded more, more like German, I think. Okay. If, if you were to hear it today, it would sound more German than actual English wow. is my understanding of it, but yeah. Yeah, but leave that for the linguistics. <laughs> yes, I'm not, language was definitely not my forte, I guess. Yeah. And yeah, that's why people like uh, Tolkien, the author mm -hmm. Tolkien, who's like linguist, you know, oh. extraordinaire and created his own languages. Like that's, you know, that that's is cool. over my head yeah. and it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm continuing my journey of uh, learning modern Greek mm -hmm. uh, as part of my adult class at our church. Yeah. And that's something, I mean, learning a new language is wild because also it just 
trains your brain so much mm -hmm. to do other skills and uh it's like knitting basically but in yeah. uh in a different yeah. <laughs> format <laughs> i think um so we celebrate in the greek tradition um the feast day of ios uh, vasili and on new year's uh day we have the vasilopita which Ooh. is a, a new year's day bread Cool. And it's flavored and scented with orange and almond and uh, sprinkled with sesame seeds. Ooh. And it's blessed. And cool. each person gets a slice of it. And it's a beautiful sort of uh, bready cake. And there as, yes, there's actually a coin in one of the pieces. Oh. And, yes. I think I might have heard something mm -hmm. either this or similar. Yeah. So cool. I was also looking, obviously, like I know from the Greek end, uh, Eastern European tradition, mm -hmm. but I think in Western Europe as well, it's uh, called something like a king cake, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. like that for the holidays. Uh, so each person gets a slice, and whoever gets the coin for the year has has the best luck. Yeah. Um, and I think fun. I've gotten it probably once, so we'll see oh, what cool. happens. Yeah. 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 Uh, very fun and delicious, mm -hmm. gorgeous, uh, toasted with a little uh, butter on top. Nice. So yes, we, we really good. enjoy <laughs> that bread. Nice. Um, and also something kind of fun. Um, there's this tradition in Greece of the Christmas boats. Ooh. So in the obviously Greece is a very seafaring country. Mm -hmm. uh, in the harbor, the actual sailboats are all decorated with fairy lights, oh, which is fun. <laughs> but then also people have miniatures in mm -hmm. their homes of boats, little sailboats, and they decorate them cool. in sort of a Christmas tradition. So oh, that's fun. Yeah, almost like a Christmas tree, like the Germans with the pickles, yeah, but it's yeah. a <laughs> it's yeah. a boat. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. So as a uh, person of Greek heritage um was Saint Nicholas kind of did you learn about him growing up because I know technically I mean he's from I'm pretty sure he's Greek descent but he li lived in modern day Turkey now so but um yeah that's kind of I grew up so I grew up not believing in Santa Claus okay my parents never <laughs> fed into the the marketed version the marketed <laughs> version of Christmas of Santa Claus. We grew up with the story of St. Nicholas, and so I, um, you know, which is also probably another reason why I like history so much, mm -hmm. is because I was taught about it, you know, when I was so little, but, um, so St. Nicholas, I think of, um, Christmas time, and, right? Sure. Uh, yeah, Ayos Vasili, St. Basil. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah. his feast day is right around the same time, yeah. so that's really yeah. what, um, yeah. is, uh, that tradition of, like, Santa Claus, where mm -hmm. it evolved from. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. yeah. Um, Funny enough that you mentioned uh, what you grew up on mm -hmm. sort of during this holiday. Yeah. Uh, I had a wonderful friend when I was probably kindergarten age um, who was Russian. Oh, interesting. So there was cool. an old kind of folk tradition of elves oh, where fun. you would put your shoes outside of mm -hmm. your bedroom mm -hmm. and you would get little prizes from the elves. So yeah. actually my mom did it a couple of times when I was little where okay. I, I really truly believed that yeah. there were little elves coming to that's give funny. me something. Yeah. yeah. That's so. also I don't know what the connection is, but um for Saint Nicholas's feast day, which is December sixth, people would put their shoes out and they would get candy mm -hmm. in there as well. Like the night before his feast day. Okay. So I don't know where that tradition right. kind of right. mixed and, and melded together. But yeah, the the shoes mm -hmm. with candy and shoes, that's that's yeah. a whole thing. Yeah. Um and of course not to add in like some horror, but there's also Krampus. Oh, no, I'm which so, is very I scary. wanted to talk about Krampus, <laughs> which is so funny. You're like, yes, yes, not yes. to bring it in. No, I am so fascinated with the whole thing about Krampus that I wanted to bring it up. Um, yeah, so for those of you who don't know, Krampus is a uh, folk tale of Germanic origin, um, primarily in Germany, Austria, a little bit of Hungary, like that whole area of the world. And he's basically like the anti Saint Nicholas. Mm -hmm. um, he in in the legends, he's uh, half goat, half demon. Um, he's got you know scary horns and black fur and hooves, and he wears these cloaks and things. He's actually terrifying. Yes. <laughs> um, so he was. Uh, what's funny is that he comes out. He kind of like in, in the in the stories, he would kind of be. He would go out with Saint Nicholas and be like the the counter for mm -hmm. all the kids that Saint Nicholas was giving, you know, presents and and gifts and candies to. He would be going to the naughty kids and um, either whipping them with birch branches, oh or he would just <laughs> abduct them and 
and take them and possibly torture them or eat them. So pretty wild. Um, Krampus is a, a wild story to me because um, it's basically a fear tactic to get kids to behave and be good. Yes. Um, but it's intense. It is so intense and kind of scary. Um, and uh, I think the legend also has a bit of a Norse connection mm. because um, they say that he's the son of the goddess of the underworld in, okay. in Norse mythology, which is Hel or Hela. And um, so there's this whole connection with just kids being taken to the underworld, which is not something you really think about with Christmas time of being ter just terrified like that. Um, even today, um, well, so with Krampus, it kind of, um, the traditions had a resurgence um, in the past like few hundred years okay. and they do parades uh, around and, and young men would dress up as Krampus mm -hmm. and just kind of like stalk the kids, you know, and kind of like mess around with them and, and chase them around and, um, and they would dress up in really scary, uh, scary garb to make them look like Krampus and um, it's very interesting. I don't know why I'm so fascinated with that concept of just making the most terrifying thing you could think of and yep. be, don't, don't be bad, mm -hmm. otherwise Krampus is going to get you. Yeah. Um, they made a movie about Krampus. Saw it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Back in like 2015, yep. I think it came out. Uh -huh. And it's, it's both parts funny and yeah. scary. Um, it's, it actually is very funny. There are some, some parts in there that just make me laugh and then there are other parts that's like genuinely scary. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, me and my family, we did a couple Christmases where we watched that movie. Um, we haven't watched it in a few years, but it's, um, yeah, scary, scary times. And they brought it to America, basically, because they were all English-speaking uh, yeah. people. Yeah. I think it was, like, set in modern day. Mm -hmm. Um, and I remember there being a lot of jump scares, and it was a yeah. very dark yeah. kind of scenery. Well, yeah, because he comes in a blizzard, okay. and, and yeah. so the, the family, it, it kind of opens up with the family being very dysfunctional, kind of not not really um, embracing the, uh, you know, true, I guess, purpose or meaning of Christmas, which is a, a lot of those um, tropes of, you mm -hmm. know, giving into the commercialism, and um, but they're also just really kind of just at each other's throats right. and whatever, so very dysfunctional family and then they all get together for Christmas and then a huge blizzard comes, knocks out the power and then and then Krampus comes for them. What's interesting is that the grandmother of the mm. of the family yes. is German, I believe. So she is like trying to warn everybody, mm. like, hey, Krampus is coming and so she tries to, you know, help them a bit, but I won't spoil what happens, but um, it's very interesting Christmas movie. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, if you're bored on Christmas Day. Yeah. Check it yeah. out with yeah. your family. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Krampus, what a wild tradition. Yeah. I think it's it's very interesting. Uh, it's really fascinating also to look at how pagan traditions also sort of permeated time. Yeah. Um, like you were saying with, with the idea of Krampus and Norse myth mythology and mm -hmm. whatnot. So uh, in Greek tradition also, uh, the pomegranate represents mm -hmm. fortune. Yeah. And it's actually one of the characteristics of Persephone, uh, goddess of the underworld. Yes. However, yeah. pomegranates um, hold space in a lot of Greek, uh, modern Greek mm -hmm. tradition too, where you, you open a pomegranate uh, on a doorstep and it's oh, supposed nice. to represent, you know, good fortune. Cool. Um, and, you know, I think fruit also is like, you know, fertility a lot mm -hmm. of times too. So yeah. that's always something when I see a pomegranate, it always reminds mm -hmm. me of um, our ethnic uh, cultures and yeah. traditions and my grandparents too. So oh, it's, it's sort of nice to look at those very sort of wintry things yeah. as well, um, characteristics of the season. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. I also looked into Christmas Carols, mm -hmm. which is another one. Um, uh, my mom actually, she sings in the choir at our church that our good friend Krista is the music director. She conducts the choir and they had a concert last night for um, Christmas Carols and uh, they sang beautifully. It was a really, really nice uh, concert. They sang a bunch of carols and um, we read from scripture and it was very, very like Christmas centered. Mm -hmm. It kind of made me like slow down my brain a little oh, sure. bit for the season and it was great um and they sang some carols in latin mm -hmm. some some more traditional christmas carols that we know um but that whole origin was interesting too kind of how christmas carols developed 
Um, and they actually also have a connection with St. Francis of Assisi. Um, the Franciscan friars, his order that he started, um, they were, uh, they kind of made Christmas carols a bit more of a popular tradition. And carols were actually meant to be danced with. Mm -hmm. um, they would dance in a, in a circle. Um, I think that tradition kind of fizzled out um, when it came to singing Christmas carols. You don't really dance with them anymore, but um, dancing with the Christmas carols was uh, a part of that. Um, Henry VIII wrote Christmas carols. Um, and again, another thing that was banned, uh, Christmas related, was Christmas carols were banned by Oliver Cromwell in mm -hmm. the 1600s, uh, 1644. Mm -hmm. um, and then they were reinstated when, when the monarchy came back. But um, is it because, I'm sorry to interrupt you, no, you're good. Is it, do you think it's because the carols were like almost like an embellishment, not like uh, a very sort of like rigid Puritan? Yeah, okay. well, they became, it became very um, Puritan. They were like, well, the whole thing of like dancing also mm -hmm. was right, very right, like, right. don't, you don't right. do that. Right. Um, very, very rigid. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think that probably has, has some, uh, some part in it. Um, you know, you... It, yeah, it's it's kind of having like such a, a zeal and, and 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 wanting to sing out and and you know that kind of stuff um, could could have been seen as like not no good. Right. We don't like we too don't ornate. Like yeah, yeah. Um, but you know they did bring it back, um, which is which is good. Mm -hmm. We we still sing a lot of the old Christmas carols mm -hmm. that were you know um, originating back to like the 14th century. Right. A lot of the original um, Christmas carols were sung in Latin because um, the, you know, Latin was the language of the church mm -hmm. at the time. And um, so they were mostly in Latin. Um, and actually there were some uh, Christmas carols that were, um, that you can trace all the way back to the second century. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then um, of course, when, when more languages were coming into play and, and people were like, we don't speak Latin. Mm -hmm. It's not really good for all of us people who are not, you know, right. it's Latin not relatable. It's not for relatable. Some yeah. So they kind of um, branched out into, uh, you know, other languages. And um, so, yeah, I think um, the whole, and also Christmas carols, you think of Christmas time, but um, there was tradition of carols being sung at different points mm -hmm. in the year, like spring, like May carols. Right, and right. But um, really the Christmas ones really stuck with, um, mm -hmm. I think, just society in general right. stuck with yeah. them. So Yeah, it's sort of like that warm and fuzzy yeah. celebration mode. Yeah, yeah. for the holidays, which is great. Yeah. yeah. I never really went like door to door Christmas caroling. I never did that. I was not much of a, no. a singer, but, um, but it is nice to hear, you know, all those mm -hmm. old songs and so when I think of like Christmas carols, you also think of like modern day Christmas music, oh, sure. which either people love it or they hate mm -hmm. it, um, which, so I thought it'd be fun to kind of talk about just Christmas music in yeah. general. I'm more of an instrumental person. Yeah. 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 I like a good like soundtrack, like a Yule soundtrack. Mm -hmm. You can find them on YouTube, which mm -hmm. is, they run for like a couple hours. Yeah. And um, yeah, I am, I am an instrumental Christmas music kind of person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's. There's a couple of like good modern day Christmas songs that I like, but you can't kind of go wrong with the classics, yeah. like the old ones, and um, you know that have really just beautiful melodies. Like mm -hmm. the you know they're just so timeless, and a lot of it they're timeless because they've been around for hundreds of right. years, and they're still we're, we're still singing them today, um, which is cool. Yeah. yeah, if I had to choose uh, a like singer songwriter, it would mm -hmm. have to be like. Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Like that yeah. era of Christmas music is just like mm -hmm. classic to me. Yeah. Nat you know? King Cole's Christmas. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, I associate his voice with Christmas. Like that's just kind of because what my family grew up listening to was, was that whole oh, sure. era. Um, B. Martin's Christmas in the Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I will say though, all the very poppy kind of Christmas music makes great audio for reels. Uh, so oh, I will yes. say that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're very popular. But yeah. you know, when yes, when I think Christmas and holiday, I have to go with the, you know, classics like the 1950s and yeah. you know. Although I'm a big fan of Michael Bublé. Oh yeah. I, I was, was obsessed with him when mm -hmm. I was younger um, because I, I do love, B. Martin's my favorite singer. So I gravitated towards that time period of music um, thanks to my parents. Mm -hmm. And then so when Michael Bublé came around, I'm like, oh my gosh, he's like a modern day singer. like 
you know, singing right. the same type of songs as, you know, back in the day. So, um, and he's got a great voice. I love my Foo Boy. Yeah. And his Christmas stuff is pretty good too. Yeah. I like listening Absolutely. To stuff, like yeah. that classic kind of voice. Yeah. Really yeah. good stuff. Um, so any uh, Christmas traditional foods that you're excited to eat or make? I don't know if I'm just not remembering if we had, if my family personally had any Christmas traditions when it comes to food. I mean, food in general, like feasting at mm -hmm. this time has been around for, you know, centuries so it's like it is a big part of celebrating coming together eating a meal sitting down um and celebrating that harvest mm -hmm. right of the, you know the year that you spent um and celebrating and um so but my family personally so i'm uh italian and irish um and a little bit of dutch my last name is dutch so um and a bunch of other little things but primarily italian and Irish, um, but I can't, I honestly, I can't think of, like, specific traditions that we, that we do mm -hmm. around Christmas time, um, that are specifically related to right, those, right. to those regions of the world, um, so, yeah, I don't think we have anything. Is there a yeah. cookie you love? We never, like, yeah, we never made Christmas no? cookies. Oh no, so, gosh. we, we never made, like, those, yeah, traditional Italian Christmas cookies, mm -hmm. we never did that. My dad makes the best chocolate chip cookies, just classic yeah. chocolate chip. Stick with what you we know. We stick with the, with that. We're pretty. <laughs> we're, we're not. We haven't. We're not very adventurous. Yeah. Um. Not a very adventurous family. Um. When it comes to food and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um. My youngest brother is breaking that tradition of being very, kind of, I don't say boring with food, but we like what we like and we stick yeah. with it. Um. So maybe we'll try and branch out a little bit more. And now that I've become more interested in baking, I might want to try some some different things, but. Um, yeah, I didn't really grow up, like, eating different, okay, I will say one thing that's mm -hmm. not really specific to any, like, cultural thing, but my aunt makes also one of the best sugar cookies, so she makes them, like, at every holiday, and she decorates them accordingly, um, and so I do look forward to her sugar cookies every year. Nice, the cup of tea. Um, cup, yeah, now that I'm a tea drinker, mm -hmm. I will, I will balance that out with, with some tea, um, so yeah, I look forward to her baking, like, all the time. But um, those sugar sugar cookies um, are probably the closest thing we have to like a, a tradition of of cookies. The, yeah. the Hartog sugar cookie. Yes, <laughs> they're very very good. So yeah. we do the Italian seven fishes. Mm. Yep. So we do usually. Yeah, like, I, I know that yeah. tradition, but yep. I my family's you never do. done it. My mom probably will say she she did it when right. she was younger. I think. Mom, mama, please like yeah. check me on this. <laughs> I don't know, Susie. <laughs> yeah, don't let me know because I really. I really don't know, but yeah. I, I know of the tradition. So, sure. Yeah. So we do a seafood salad. Mm -hmm. uh, we do usually clams, mm -hmm. lobster and shrimp, mm -hmm. that sort of thing on Christmas Eve. And it's wonderful. Um, we also do a lasagna usually mm -hmm. on Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. And then we have a plethora of Greek um, cookies, uh, Mela Makarna and Corbiedis, mm -hmm. which are covered in powdered sugar. I actually like Mela Makarna more because they have um, sort of like a sugar syrup on top, uh, mm. that's, and they're also scented with nuts and nice. uh, orange mm. yeah, uh, essence. Cool. Um, and surprisingly though, uh, one of the things I've missed from my childhood that my mom Rhonda has not made in a while is a tiramisu. Mm. So I'm going to do yeah. a gluten-free tiramisu. Nice. Uh, all I need is gluten-free ladyfingers. Nice. And I'm going to venture out into doing a gluten-free lasagna uh, because I don't want to cheat and eat gluten with regular lasagna. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do a sort of winter forward mushroom lasagna. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited for that. Yeah. yeah. That sounds really so. good. I'm getting really hungry talking about it. I know. <laughs> and those are kind of easy things. Yeah. Like, we don't go crazy. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to just relaxing and being grateful for our family mm -hmm. and our friends. Yeah. And well, if I'm all being grateful and food, what's funny is that the last couple of years, my family has, we've done Thanksgiving Part two. Part two. Um, <laughs> we do Thanksgiving dinner uh, for Christmas. We've done that either the last like two maybe Christmases. Um, I think it it also I think started when one of us. It might have been me. I might have been gone for Thanksgiving mm -hmm. or somebody was gone and they missed they missed the meal. Um, and so we said, oh, let's just have it at Christmas so that we each right. can have the Christmas the Thanksgiving meal that my family loves. I'm a I love Thanksgiving. It's one of my favorite holidays. I love the food. So 
Um, it might not have been me though, I don't remember. Somebody was missing and so we did a Thanksgiving part two and now and we've kind of been doing that for a few years mm -hmm. and I think we're doing that again this year. Um, which I don't complain about because no. I love Thanksgiving, like a traditional Thanksgiving meal. Yeah. So that's become a weird tradition for yeah. us too. Yeah. Well, I told you the other day, there's nothing like a roast bird. Mm -hmm. I love a roast bird. So it's good stuff mm -hmm. and it really, yeah, potatoes, oh. all the big things. Potatoes in every form. Yes. <laughs> every form. Good. So uh, I'm not sure what we have planned next for our fourth episode, but... Yeah. Well, we're going to come back probably after, after. the new year. Um, so we'll start up again in January. 2023. Yes. Very exciting. And, now, and when we get past kind of the holiday season and everything, we really can kind of start fresh with whatever we yeah. want to do. So um, that'll be very exciting to, to kind yeah. of brainstorm about uh, what we want to do and maybe some suggestions from people if yeah, they want please to comment see if certain there's... things yeah if you you know have us talk about certain uh either eras in history or topics in history or whatever you want us to talk about like you could let us know give us some ideas but um because we definitely have a few things yeah, sure i think in mind maybe too many tricks things. up our sleeve yeah. <laughs> yeah i think there's going to be a lot of fun fun stuff to do moving forward absolutely yeah. and then once the new year comes we have wool walk yeah. Um, April, May. So that's mm -hmm. going to be a fun event. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't around for that yeah. last year, so I missed the craziness of, yeah. of what that entails. Absolutely. So I'm bracing myself. For I that. know. <laughs> um, but yes, we wish all of you, our yeah. subscribers, all 300 of you, yes. 300 plus. So yes, thank you. Yes, 300. That's yeah. so great. The support um, has been really, really great. And this yeah. is only our third episode. We're so excited to bring more. Um, fun stuff to you guys and yeah we hope that you all have a very very merry christmas um happy holidays Absolutely. spend the time with your family knit up some fun stuff yeah please crochet. tag us in our <laughs> in your projects we'd love to see yes uh while you're watching our channel we'd love to see yes. what you're knitting up yes. <laughs> yes so uh yes we wish you a wonderful holiday season and a blessed 2023 yay